Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about don't be part of the flock. I know. What is this flock? Well, this is what we've been talking about. We brought this up a few times on the weekly news roundup, but we want to talk a little bit more about it in a more dedicated video. When this first came out and Google's like, hey, we're going to downplay cookies and things, I thought, yeah, that might be not be a bad idea. And then we start seeing what's going on and give me cookies back, please. I'll get fat on my cookies. Just don't let me be part of the flock. And what I want to do today is impress on you the the really the danger here and when a company like Google starts pushing things in a certain direction we start to see some things where it kind of becomes part of the industry and then everyone jumps on board with it so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and start by having a look at what Flock is. So the Electronic Frontier Foundation did an excellent write-up. All of these articles, I have three articles here, they're all going to be in the description. So go ahead and read these, take the time. It is actually important that you understand what's going on here. So Google has this new thing called Flock. And the entire idea behind Flock is they have recognized that, that people don't like cookies. They're being blocked and things like that. And in reality, yeah, cookies should probably be blocked. Uh, there's The reason I'm not completely against them is it's something that the user has control over. I can say, keep this cookie to keep me logged into this website, but block this cookie because that's just a tracker. And too many people are wising up to these ideas. And so Google is creating Flock. The ultimate problem with it is that this is something that is tied inside your Google account. Sure, they have this new privacy sandbox, which you have control over your data. Well, if you remember, there was an old documentary, uh, I say old, maybe four or five years old, called Terms and Conditions May Apply. One of the things that they did in there is in within the scope of the EU, you have access, you, you had ability to get access to your data. This is even before GDPR. And so a guy petitioned Facebook for the information and the court said, yes, Facebook has to give him the information. And what he found is that all of the things that he had deleted, deleted, were still there. They were just flagged with a PHP code, don't show to the user. So for all intents and purposes, you know it's deleted, but it's not actually deleted. And that is the biggest problem with the flock and the privacy sandbox, that it's simply a toggle switch that you, quote, turn off. Does it prevent Google from seeing the things that you're doing? No, it doesn't. All it's going to do is, at least for now, block some aspect of what you already have. So they go through here and in and in great uh, great detail, it talks about the importance of putting everybody into what they are calling cohorts. In fact, the flock here is, I think they have it down here somewhere, um, Federated Learning of Cohorts. That's what flock stands for. And so what we're doing, Federated, of course, a Federated platform is one, it, it's kind of like... Um, uh, kind of like uh, Mastodon is a federated platform. And then this can tie into anything else inside that federated. So in other words, federated here means that it's going to be, it's going to move beyond the individual software that you have. It links and syncs to other things of uh, other pieces of data that you may or may not actually have access to. Learning implies the AI. It's collecting all this data and then they're allowing an AI system to put you into cohorts, in other words, groups of similar interests. Now, we didn't pull up the articles here, but if you remember a few years back, Facebook had some snafus where they were uh, allowing people to sort who they wanted to see their advertising. That might be excellent if I want to sell something like, I don't know, may maybe a new microphone. Not everybody is interested in, in a nice Audio-Technica microphone here. And so identifying who might be the better option, hey, that's a fairly benign thing. Unfortunately, uh, housing departments, uh, people renting apartments were utilizing these cohorts and they were selecting the groups that they wanted to apply to. And the problem is that violates federal law, which says you cannot discriminate against. And it was ruled that people, mostly it was Facebook ads, were discriminatory and that people are saying, well, I don't really want that particular group of people in here, so let's not show them advertisements for my particular apartment complex. But these other people, I would like these types of tenants, so let's go ahead and show these guys advertisements. Well, that was found a violation. That is 
a early model of what this is. They were identifying people into cohort groups and then utilizing it. Here's the difference. In cookies, it is a system on your browser that you can delete, you have a little bit of control over. In the flock, this is in Google's system. There is no way of escaping once you're in there. Once you are part of the flock, you are branded as part of the herd and you are not getting back out. Now, there are a few things you can do about it, and we'll kind of get into that here in the article. But going down, what they wanted to do is they wanted to isolate things out so that you weren't reliant on cookies, and instead you were starting to rely on uh, on them collecting the data. Now, this somewhat ties into about a year, year and a half ago or so, Google very quietly put something into the Chromium browser, which eventually is into the Chrome browser now, where if you log into any Google service, it automatically logs you into the browser and then keeps you logged into the browser. It was the open source and the Linux community that brought this to people's attention, literally the moment it was rolled out, forcing Google to allow an opt-out. That was not even an opt-out, was not even in there until the Linux community stands up and says this is a bad thing so we did that is the Linux community and then in the next couple versions of of the chromium base we now had an option to disable that but you still have to go into an advanced settings and disable that by default it will log you in to your Google account and keep you logged in on the browser not just the Google service that you have logged into and so part of this and part of the, the reason I was telling people way back then don't log into your browser is because this allows them to store that cookie data in a Google account that is on their servers that they have control over, not on your computer like the cookies where you have control over it. So the federated learning of cohorts means we're going to collect all this data put it into your Google account, and then we're going to take this not based on cookies or anything else, but based on your browser itself, and then show this to anybody who wants to see it. And so you get the flock ID. It's basically your branding. And so with your branding, this is a new type of fingerprint. It is a very advanced fingerprint that anybody who wants it can see it, which contains all of the information that was causing a problem. It has the demographic information. It has the race information. It has the income information. And it is based upon the things that you have looked at within the last period of time. And right now in their experimentations, that appears to be seven weeks. So we do have a lot of extra information. We're not going to read through all of this, of course. Uh, beyond privacy is the section where you should certainly read about this. We'll just read a little bit of this here. The kind of individualized profiling that is enabled by cross-context uh, identifiers today. The goal of Flock and other proposals is to avoid letting trackers access specific pieces of information that they can tie to specific people. As we've shown, Flock may actually help trackers in many contexts, but even if Google is able to iterate its design and prevent these risks, the harms of targeted advertising are not limited to violations of privacy. Flock's core objective is at odds with other civil liberties. So what they're saying here is looking at what it's doing, the idea is, hey, we're not giving you the specific data. We're just putting you as part of a cohort. The problem is your ID is also tied to your IP address, and that does allow a complete de-anonymization of exactly who you are. And that is really what the problem is. So you can kind of read through here, and it's definitely, uh, uh, definitely a good read. And then, of course, they have this final appeal. Google, please don't do this. Now, DuckDuckGo has jumped out, and they have some, some things here. So First and foremost, now this article here is actually going to go into some of ways you can not be part of the flock for the initial trial. The initial trial already started. You might already be part of the flock and not know it. And then what this is going to do is it's going to show you all the ways to opt out. And then the EFF has actually created a tool that we will look at last to see if you happen to be part of this or not based on is it serving the flock ID or not. So basically, this is something the smaller websites don't really know as much about, but all of the big corporate partners with Google, all of these guys, they already have this stuff implemented so they can start tracking you in ways that you didn't even think were possible. 
So they have some uh, TLDR stuff at the very top. We'll go ahead and read these bullet points. They've created a new tracking method called Flock. They've put it into Chrome and automatically turned it on for a lot of users. Now it's between 0.5 and 5% of users, but we're talking about several billion users because Google Chrome is the most popular web browser. And isn't it neat that they waited until they had 75 or so percent of the browser dominance in the market and then, hey, let's just turn it all on. And the average person's perpetually logged in anyway so they can collect, store all of this data. And sure, you can quote, toggle it off, but that does not prevent Google from seeing and storing the information you are doing. Flock is bad for privacy, they say. It puts you in a group based on your browsing history and any website that can group Flock ID to target and fingerprint you. You can use DuckDuckGo Chrome extension. That's what DuckDuckGo just created. If you are still using Chrome, the best thing you can do, stop using Google Chrome. Now, I realize there's not a lot of good web browsers. We just did the reason about why Firefox is dying. I mean, Edge is now taking over Firefox market share, which is frightening. I mean, do we want to be part of Google or do we want to put it, be part of Microsoft? I mean, which would you prefer, Socrates? The the um, the water hemlock tea or or the strychnine tea? Uh, yeah, not a whole lot of good options here. And then, of course, there's other ones. Uh, really, there's no super ideal browser. They, they all have a lot of issues. We got Brave. They have some unscrupulous business stuff going on in the background. We have Vivaldi. Portions of it are closed source. We have Opera, now owned by a Chinese firm. We have Waterfox, owned by a very scary uh, data analytics firm. Yeah, our web browser choices are, are getting narrow. This is why I wish that Firefox wouldn't die. I wish that they would get out of politics, they'd get out of everything they're doing and just focus on being a web browser. Don't be worrying about what people are using your web browser for. Just get out there and start being a web browser again and we'll see that market share tick back up. Last DuckDuckGo search uh, on our DuckDuckGo.com is now configured to opt out of Flock regardless if you use it or not. So if you are using if you are using DuckDuckGo search, you will have a little bit better option. So here is what a user can do to avoid it. So these are the things you want to do if you do not want to be part of a flock. Don't use Google Chrome. Right now, Google Chrome is the only browser implementing this. Unfortunately, this is going to work its way into all sorts of browsers because why wouldn't Google want it into everything? Let's just cram it on into the open source Chrome code. Yay! Uh, I don't know if they're doing that yet or not, but um, maybe the people more familiar with code can, uh, with Chromium can have a look at that. So number one though, don't use Google Chrome. That is where all of the testing is going. That's where all of the early implementation is. If you do have to use Chrome, use the DuckDuckGo Chrome extension, which is going to block all of the various interactions of Flock and it blocks it on Google's end and it also blocks it on the website end. So if the website's asking for a Flock ID, it's going to block that part as well. And then third, they have change your Chrome and or Google settings. Now, this here, this is not going to prevent them from collecting data. This is just going to prevent them from showing you the data they have on you. They're going to keep collecting this data. Number one, they say stay logged out of your Google account on your browser. There you go. Don't sync history data with Chrome or create a sync passphrase. Like, do we really do we really need these devices to, oh, I'm on my tablet over here. Oh, I got to go to the computer and automatically connect it. Dude, retype the website in. I'm sorry. You don't need to sync this stuff. Remember, everything that you are going to do to make your life, quote, easier and more simple feeds the algorithm of these big data analytics companies that are trying to invade your privacy. Don't sync your stuff. Just pull up the web browser again, okay? Ooh, it's so hard to type on the keyboard. Anymore, you just talk to your keyboard. I mean, really. In Google Activity Controls, disable web and app activity or include Chrome history and activity from sites, apps, devices that use Google services. So disable all of that stuff. And in the Google ad settings, disable ad personalization. Again, that's not going to collect, um, prevent Google from collecting that data to begin with. It's just going to prevent them from sharing that data temporarily right now. And by the way, they seem to be toggling that back on. 
I looked around the the accounts the other day. I was like, oh, let's go ahead and click on that. And I found that for some reason, personalized ads was re enabled in the account that I use with YouTube that I had disabled a long time ago. Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. So that's how you can do it. And then they go into um, what is Flock anyway, linking right on back. So we're not going to do that. Oh, by the way, any web developers, you can do an HTTP response um, uh, response header where you can uh, disable it. So if any web developers out there who are serving Google Ads, you can opt out of Flock. Uh, all you guys are automatically opted in anyway. So just be aware of that. And finally, on to the last portion here, Am I Flocked? This is amiflocked.org from the EFF. And you can come on down here and click on this. And you can see that the browser does not have Flock enabled. It's only available in Google Chrome versions 89 and above. And I am on uh, not on Chrome here. So you can... Go in here, and this is going to show you if you're a part of it, whatever else. They go into some of the basics, how to opt out. Of course, here's the website opt out again. Right now, you can opt out also by disabling third-party cookies, but this is just part of the test because Flock is supposed to replace all cookies. So we have to keep that in mind. Right now, they're using it as a means to test, train, and verify, but eventually this technology will work without it. But for now, as part of the test, disable third-party cookies in Google Chrome. Of course, stop using Google Chrome, guys. Come on, use the better browser. Like, let me know in the comments down below because I don't know of one. But uh, anyway, you can head on over there, amiflocked.org, and you can find out more information about that. So there we have it, guys. Flock is very dangerous. It allows them to store and collect that data on their servers, not on your individual device. There is no way of going back. Sure, you can disable a button in their options, but that is not going to stop them from having that data. It's not going to stop them from using it, and it's not going to stop them from perpetuating their goals in the uh, in the um, the entire scope of the um, the selfish ledger, this will be your reminder. Go look up the selfish ledger and watch that. This is the ultimate master plan to know what everybody's doing and not just know what everybody's doing, not know what their interests are. But the next phase after this is to guide your interests into what they want you to have. They want to collect the data. They want to stir in your mind the suggestion to give them the data that they want to have that they don't have about you yet. Oh, we don't know how heavy this guy is. Let's keep suggesting him now a smart scale that he can tie the smart scale into his very convenient app so now we can know what weight he is. We can have an idea of his shopping habits through you know, Instacart and, and other shopping systems. We can collect and share all of this data. And then their final phase that they're going to be moving into is to guide you in the direction that they want you to be on a social level. That is the Borg. That's the ultimate goal. Flock is part of this. Avoid the flock. Do not be a sheep. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be part of the flock. So these resources here are listed in the description down below. Go ahead and read those. Read up on this. Understand what's going on and take active steps to not be part of the flock. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.